Runkle here for HotCars.com. I'm here in Hawthorne, California at the headquarters of AEM EV. And I'm about to test drive this 07 Mustang. But for those of you looking closely, it's not really an 07 Mustang anymore because this is a test bed and a demonstration vehicle for AEM's Tesla Swap. It's got rear wheel drive, a Tesla base motor, and they've squeezed a little bit of extra performance out of it. So let's get in there. I'll have AEM EV's Director of Marketing, Lawson Malika, with me in the car to answer any questions, of which I'm sure I will have many. In the meantime, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. All right, I've got Lawson Malika here. Thank Hi. you, Lawson, for giving me this opportunity to drive the test stang. Uh, Lawson should hopefully be able to take us on a good tour of this thing, because with the dash here that AEM makes and the controls, it's all a little bit new to me. Uh, so we're in granny mode because I'm a noob, but let's get this thing going. What we do at AEM EV obviously is the controls. You know, we'd see these beautiful builds, incredible fabrication, everything, but the challenge is driving. So they were Sunday cars, car show cars. Um, and we, you know, we're performance guys and we love performance of electric vehicles. Well, turning this into something that can be daily drivable, but also sporty is uh, just from the last two minutes, it drives pretty much like a normal car. I'm not having to super duper model it the throttle to uh, prevent from burning out here, but you were saying this thing's got some pretty serious power once you step on it and get it out of granny mode, of course. Yeah, yeah, like we're at 300 newton meters of torque is our target, is our, um, and then we're mapped right now. for that from a traction standpoint. Yeah, this, uh, this motor, the Tesla base drive, we're able to ring it out uh, even at a 450 newton meter target. You still got hydraulic power steering. Yes. And hydraulic brake boosting mm -hmm. or hydraulic brake assist. Yeah, it's all electronic. So what we did was essentially, um, you know, all the engine driven accessories were converted to electric and then they were, they're controlled by our power distribution units, which, um, allows you to program switch controls through our vehicle control unit. So this is the low power level. It's got plenty of power at the low power level. <laughs> <laughs> and you can hear a little bit of that whine, which I, I that. like. I love it. I don't like it when people are faking these engine noises no, for elect no. electric vehicles. It's like, well, what's the point? I want the future stuff. I'm with you. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, so. It's got plenty of power. We're in 300 newton meters. We can go up significantly higher. But like, this is an 07 Ford Mustang GT, and I would say it's significantly faster than an 07 Ford Mustang GT already. It's about two seconds faster. That's than a lot faster. Stock counterpart. Yeah. So it's significantly faster. Um, and that's on these tires, which are, you know, it's a decent street tire. It's yeah. nothing super sticky. We didn't put slicks or even drag rigs on them. We just ran it with, we had it. I think we took maybe five pounds out of the tire. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really, we, we played with some pressures, but really didn't get much change. From a suspension standpoint, the entire subframe of the Tesla has been French themed at the back. So the gas tank was dropped, the entire, obviously all of the internal combustion engine, drive line, gas tank, everything. And then uh, a couple of heavy duty brackets were fabricated into the whole subframe was put in. So as you noticed, when you were doing your walk around the rear, everything in the back is Tesla all the way up to the uh, half shafts. Rotor, the brake calipers. Brake calipers, everything. Yeah. So then in terms of regen, only the back wheels would be doing regen as we would think about it. Correct. Cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because we got no motor up front. Cool. And so, What's really cool is that AEM then uses their dash in instrumentation screen here. I can flick through and check out a lot of different readouts um, about which I know approximately nothing except for the one that says the high torque limit, which I know I want to turn up soon. Yes, yeah, you got to get that one up there. And then we can look at every single battery cell here. It's pretty cool that you can see every single battery state of charge. And then you click through to the charge screen, and then you're back to your sort of home driving screen, which shows me the speed I'm going, the state of charge, how much uh, voltage the batteries have, and it's even got a little extra needle for my region, which is one of my favorite things about electric cars, is sort of the one pedal driving, which I'm noticing 
it's not doing the regen as hard as, say, a Tesla when you have it in that strong regen mode. Do we have the ability to control that? Yes, yeah, fully programmable regen, and you're absolutely right. We're not big fans of that. Um, I like it. Yeah, but it's personal preference. I it get is, it. but we love the regen. Yeah. So we just dialed it back to where it, it, it'll reel the car down, but it's not as aggressive as, say, in a stock Tesla. So we've got the screen here, and then we've also got a control system of buttons here that's yes. part reverse neutral drive. You turn it on with the little volt button here. And then we've got the power modes and two auxiliary buttons, one for traction control and one that you can program for anything, it sounds like. Yeah, you have basically an auxiliary switch for anything you want to run a switch to. Um, so it's like an individual channel of what our PDU-8, our power distribution, the eight-channel power distribution units would do. Um, you might be asking, well, what if I have more than eight switches in my car? You can daisy chain the PDU. So we have two in this car, uh, controlling everything from uh, contact or wake states to the DC to DC inverter wake state to the headlights, the windshield wipers to actually powering up the dash and the can keypad. In addition to giving you the ability to enjoy your conversion every day. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, there's some safety stuff that we found, uh, you know, within the conversion space. And, and really that came down to communication. So our whole thing is we wanted to provide a centralized point of control for the vehicle something that sees everything. We call it the adult in the room. Our VCU is the adult in the room. Yeah. It knows everything that's happening. And even though it may not control every little feature, because it has that data, it's able to control the critical elements um, that allow you to get the vehicle to perform at its optimum, given the conditions of the state, whatever state it's in. That's temperature outside, hot and cold, which we know affects electric vehicle Absolutely. performance significantly. Well, yeah, and even things like loops. Um, we give you the ability to do not only dual loops, but dual heating and cooling loops. So you can have independent heating and cooling loops for both the motor inverter and your battery. Versus just air cooled, it is what it is, and if it gets hot and you don't know, you're gonna cook off your batteries and you're gonna blow, you know, blow the steam. Well, for me, it's the driving dynamics. It's the steering is responsive. It doesn't feel like we're in a heavy vehicle, even though you know, 3,600 pounds is a little more than the cars I typically like to drive. But this is an 07 Ford Mustang that would have had a big V8 under the hood. Yeah, three valve, number six. The brakes are very responsive, but they're not super overly bitey, which is nice. Willwood. Willwood, <laughs> Willwood up front, Tesla in the back. Willwood up front, yeah. Tesla in the back. Yeah, Drilled we have... rotors and solid rotors. <laughs> yeah, and bigger calipers. The Willwood, I mean, Willwood makes great stuff. And um, we knew we were gonna be tracking this car. Uh, eventually it would start to see some road course autocrossing. In fact, oh, I'm taking an autocrossing in a couple of weeks, so. Um, and, and I probably will play with regen for that. So. Yeah. yeah, it's like your brake bias adjuster. Exactly. Um, well, I just hit it for a little bit there on a lane change, and you can immediately tell that there's even more power on tap now that we're not in granny mode. It's not just about high performance, high speed driving when it comes to electrics. You guys are doing a Pinsgauer off-roading truck, and you put the battery in like the truck bed and the all of the components are going to be along the center spine underneath. Yeah. yeah. That thing is cool. What's, yeah. what's the deal? Okay. So that was, <laughs> again, when we when we started this, um, you know, if you're not familiar, we've had the good fortune to work with some amazing partners like Cascadia Motion, who is uh, an you know, industry leader in, in terms of uh, inverter development, motors. We've worked with Ford Motorsports, uh, our VCU 300, uh, our PDUs, dashes, keypad, everything runs the Cobra Jet 1400. Um, you know, we're performance guys, as you can tell. This is what we do. Um, and we want everybody to be able to enjoy this kind of stuff. But we have the same passion that our customers do. And it matters to us. Let's pull in to AEM again, and we'll give you guys a little walk around and you can check out how clean the battery and motor packing into this Mustang really is because it's one of the most impressive parts. So we give you a little peekaboo. This is cool. You can see the Tesla motor in the back here through a little clear plastic cover here. 
I back it out, you'll see that that's leading directly to the wheels. And that's why we've got the Tesla brakes and Tesla drive shafts. But we've got some of the AEM components here. So what's going on here? Okay, so yes, you're absolutely right. That is Tesla brakes, half shafts, inverter, motor, cradle. So it's essentially the entire subframe that's been modified, or I should say the chassis has been modified to accept the subframe for the, so it just drops right in. That's one of the great things about Tesla and the way they package their cars. The batteries are that way too. Um, they make good batteries, great energy batteries. So it gives you that hit. Um, you know, it drops current kind of quick, but it has to. I mean, it's also got to get you 300 miles and last 100,000 yeah, miles at least. Yeah. So Tesla does a great job of engineering. Anytime you see these big orange cables, this is all your high voltage cabling. Um, and that is actually, uh, believe it or not, you know, being a, a design and, and a creative guy, uh, they actually have a dedicated Pantone for EV orange. No. I, had, I had to look it up. Yeah. All right. It exists. So, um, so yeah, all of that is, and then in here you've got your contactors, which are, you know, giant relays that turn on, you know, that, that connect and decouple your high voltage system. So the PDU-8 is controlling the state of all of these various um, uh, contactors. And it can control up to eight relays, hence PDU-8. Eight, right. It also uh, powers up, I think, the charger, and I believe it does the light. Tail lights? As well, yeah. Makes so sense. Lights, so. Oh. Let's see, this is power steering. Um, this is our DC to DC. This is one of our PDU-8s. It's our master switches, obviously. Uh, let's see. We've got one set of our batteries here. These are a battery management system uh, setup. So what we have here is if this is on, the master would be lit up to indicated by the LED. And then these are all connected to this one be a serial, but every single individual cell is now being reported from the master to the VCU, which is installed right over there in the corner. That's our VCU 200, so it's our smaller unit. And it can currently control one motor and inverter, one inverter, so one motor. Um, we're gonna explore whether or not we can control more than one with it. Um, but if we can't, and somebody would want to do, say, like a dual motor Tesla swap, they'd be able to do that with our VCU 300. So again, it's just, it's really elegant. And if you're not familiar with wiring, uh, this PDU-8, that's it. It's controlling eight things. That's all the wiring that goes to it. If you've ever seen wiring for eight individual switches, you can really appreciate how elegant and clean um, having a, a power distribution unit is. And you know, we couple that up to other companies. Well, clean is the name of get the game here. You can see the front is very well organized. The rear is very well organized and it drives great. So thank you for watching us drive this test Stang, Tesla swapped Mustang. Really appreciate it. Hope you learned something. Thank you, Lawson, for giving me this opportunity. Oh man, I appreciate you coming out. Thanks for taking it for a spin. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. Um, we're gonna get you out to the track with this thing. Sounds like a blast. Hope you learned something. Thank you for watching. And as always, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. It really helps us out. Thanks. <laughs>